Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about The Flash Season 7. We're going to be talking about a new article that has some pretty big spoilers in it in regards to some new speedsters coming to the show. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So this is coming from Discussing Film, and you can check out the article in the description below. Okay, so this is going over an interview that is the part two to a part one, and I did a video on it a while ago, so the link will be in the description below. Go check out part one as well. I'm sure some of you guys saw the recent videos, but if you missed any of my recent videos, please be sure to go back. Yesterday, there was a Superman and Lois video, so it would really mean a lot if you go check them out. But anyway, so this is part two of the interview where Eric Wallace is talking about season seven of The Flash and delays and lots of different stuff happening in regards to our TV show. Okay, so the first question was, what has this COVID break been like for you and the cast? Have you been keeping in touch and sharing updates about season seven? So Eric replied, yeah, we have. It's important during all of this to keep the doors of communication open, checking in on folks and seeing how they're doing in many kinds of ways because things got interrupted at the end of season six and we were cranking along we were right in the home stretch as it were and you know it was a disappointment i think for everybody involved in the production to not see it through to the end the story that we had started telling at the beginning of season six so essentially from that bit of the article what he's talking about is he's just you know referring to the ending of the season how it abruptly stopped filming and so you know everyone was a bit upset but you know they kept in touch and they're going to start season seven right as they, you know, ended season six because it's a continuous story. So he said he's made some changes, but, and I quote, I think I've only changed the ending of the Eva McCulloch story, which I already felt very, very good about. We've made it even stronger. So to let them know about those changes and how we would be going into season seven a little differently from the first time as opposed to to in between seasons one season ends then you go away for a break then you come back and start fresh not this time the next graphic novel which is number three in season seven is like the next week it's not a summer break we just keep right on going okay so yeah he talks about just how episode one's going to start the opening and is going to be right after it ended season six is going to be continuous it's like you know it was coming back week to week or something like that rather than a whole summer break so it's going to be no big time jump maybe by a week or so but it's going to be continuous and obviously to catch up with the other dc tv shows because they like to be on the same timeline like so they can cross over and you know have some sort of continuity Basically, they're going to have to time jump some point in this season, I would guess, you know, after they finish their story arc with Eva, because they need to finish that fast, and then they will continue on to Godspeed and all the other villains that come. Okay, so the next question is, that actually lends into our next question, so do you plan on following the same episode structure that would have closed off season 6, or is it going to play out differently? Eric says, you know... It's funny, it's basically the same, but having this enforced break has allowed me to look at the ending and make some tweaks and adjustments to change maybe 20 to 25% of those scripts to make them stronger and to finally bring in some of the issues and concerns, whether it be social justice or all the things happening in the world today, and make sure those are just addressed and they weren't ignored at the end of not only Eva's story, but the beginning of the next graphic novel stories that we'll be telling. Those things are important to me as a human being let alone as a showrunner and to communicating that to the cast too so what he's talking about here is that he's made some amendments to the start of the season which would have been the ending of season six so 20 to 25 percent of stuff has been changed in the screenplay and you know Eva's story's changed the way she ends is different because it's not the ending of the season like they gotta figure it out so they can literally go into episode four and continue like a story but have it not be like the ending of the season so they defeat Eva then they continue on from there and you know some issues and concerns of today they've talked about putting that in in regards to Joe's story I think it's going to be kind of a bit more subtle than say Supergirl or some of the other shows so yeah let's move on to the next question and this question is outside of the fact that season six was cut short due to this current situation did you have any ideas or plans for the season that never came to fruition Eric says no no 
we're going to fit it all in and the ones that we did fit into season six you'll see at the top of the season as far as finishing telling Eva's story I had quite a detailed plan for season six with this new graphic novel structure it's the same approach I'm using in season seven too just me as a storyteller the more plans I have the easier it is when a turn a change or a unique opportunity arises that you have the ability to pivot because there was a plan in place and then you can make things even better so again he's just talking about some of the changes and the fact that his plan was detailed for the ending of season six but everything changed and they're gonna use that same graphic novel approach in season seven so the next question is this so in terms of having crisis on infinite earth would you say it's an advantage or disadvantage for your storytelling in season six so Eric says, I feel it was a huge advantage because it dictated a starting point for Barry's emotional journey at the beginning of season 6. I had no choice. I had to deal with the lead up to Crisis, which then led me to, well, if the first half of the season is about the lead up to Crisis, then the second half is about the fallout. That actually turned into a blessing in disguise, knowing almost a year in advance at the end of Elseworlds as we were putting it together and writing the episodes that would have been season 5 of The Flash. So a year in advance, knowing that we were driving towards Crisis, I actually started to think about Barry's journey way back then, and I didn't know I was going to be running the show at that point, I'm just that guy, I love the show so much, and I can't not think about it. So not much to break down there, it's just talking about Crisis and the crossover and you know the setup for that. And so this leads into the next question, which is, we were wondering, what can you tease about the future of Reverse Flash? How will that character play into next season? Eric says, no spoilers on that, first of all. We all love the Reverse Flash. Who doesn't? He is one of the all-time great characters, and you never know where he will appear next. I would say, look at what happened to him at the end of the exorcism of Nash Wells. It's kind of a setup for the story. When that next story happens, I don't want to reveal because it's pretty spoilery. Speedsters do have a huge role in Season 7 of The Flash and as we all know there are many kinds of speedsters including good ones and bad ones and so this is me being vague but giving you some answers so I hope this helps. Alright so this is the most interesting bit of the whole interview because he reveals that speedsters have a huge role in Season 7 of The Flash. So obviously we have got the confirmation of Godspeed coming as the main villain. We've got potentially Reverse Flash returning because of what happened to him at the end of the exorcism of Nash Wells when he essentially got shot up into the atmosphere and essentially what we all kind of got from that is he's like this sort of ghost or like he's out there somewhere. He's like about to inhabit someone's body and use it to, you know, become Reverse Flash again and have a body because I believe he lost it and that's why he was trying to get into Nash Wells. So the fact of Speedsters having a huge role in Season 7 is really, really, really exciting. What could that mean? And he says, as there are many type of Speedsters, including good ones or bad ones, as we all know. So he's teasing right here, we're going to have two sides. Obviously the Flash is going to play a big part because he's the Flash. Maybe Kid Flash will come back at some point. But then Godspeed is the big part of, you know, the start of the season in regards to speedsters. I don't know if he's going to be in the whole season or not. That is part of the villain speedsters. But are we going to have more speedsters out there? We've got that potential one that could come in, which is the speedster that Jay Garrick trained a while ago. She's a good speedster. We heard about her, but we never got to see her. Maybe she's coming in. I'm guessing there is some sort of new good speedster coming in, right? because I don't think they're going to bring Wally back like properly and the only big part would be Barry and you know Barry's always a big part of the show so it has a huge role normally in every season but mainly good but they're not always bad because we haven't had a speedster villain in a long while obviously we've had reverse slash pop up we've had godspeed pop up but now we're having Godspeed as like a main villain and everything. So are we going to get Red Death? Because, you know, that's been teased before. Like, what happens if Red Death is the one who's sending back these Godspeed clones? I think that would be really interesting. Obviously, we've all theorized about that for quite a while now because he was mentioned in Season 5. And we, like, every season we're like, oh, is Red Death coming? Is Red Death coming? And I think this could be a point where they introduce him. And I think that would be a great thing to have in Season 7 of The Flash. It would be a great twist because I don't think the person in the future or wherever this person is that's manufacturing these Godspeed clones, I don't think it should be like just normal August Hart or something like that. It's definitely not going to be that same actor we saw before because 
he was just like there as a non-talking role and so I would say it's probably going to be someone else not Godspeed and that person could be Red Death and it's someone who wants velocity who wants infinite speed so that's obviously to do with speedsters and that is a huge part of season 7 surely but will we get another good speedster let me know what do you think about that in the comments down below okay so let's move on to the last question or one of the last questions this is we've already talked about season 7 a lot but is there anything in particular you haven't mentioned that you want to vocalize eric says well i want everybody to know once again that we will wrap up the even mcculloch story in our first few episodes of season 7 that is our priority because it has the craziest twists in her story and the biggest events i mean she did put on a costume in episode 19 we have to see her in action and we see that Eva McCulloch has still a lot to come and that will take up the beginning of season 7 but once that is resolved we will begin two more graphic novels just like last season obviously the second graphic novel will probably be a little bit shorter perhaps not a full eight episodes as one would usually expect simply because of COVID production. So let's break this down. So recently we got confirmation that The Flash is aiming for 17 episodes right now. And with Eric confirming that they are finishing at the start of the season, the Eva story, it's going to take like three episodes. That was the initial plan to have three more episodes at the end of season six. And then he's saying that we got two more graphic novels. He's saying that the second one won't be, you know, the full eight episodes. So the first eight episodes after episode one, two, and three, so that's up to 11, are going to be the first graphic novel. I'm guessing that is the Godspeed stuff. And then from 11, you're gonna have up to 17, so that'll be six episodes for the second graphic novel. And this is due to, you know, restrictions and everything like that. But that's what we've heard right now. So if we do the maths and we add it all up, it should be graphic novel part one is eight episodes. And then graphic novel part two is six episodes, so it's a bit shorter. And I'm guessing they don't want to continue it on to like season eight because they will be in the same situation where they have to make one part of the story even shorter in the next season. Okay, so continuing on from this, he says, we're starting later. I'm still not sure how many episodes of The Flash will actually get to air in 2021. It's a little tricky. It's a day by day thing, but we'll still adopt the graphic novel format. So that means once again, there will be two separate sets of big bads for each of these individual stories. It's going to be just as fun, but a little crazier because one thing that we haven't done on The Flash since even seasons one, two and three is look into speedster mythology, speedster villains, things of that nature. I wouldn't be surprised, not too many spoilers here, but let's just say I wouldn't be surprised if perhaps we see a certain speedster mystery get solved next year that was teased in season 6. People have been asking for answers. I think those people are looking for the answers, are going to get exactly what they've been asking for next season. So this is really interesting because he said in regards to what they're exploring next season since season one two and three they haven't really looked into speeds the mythology but they are going to do it this season there's going to be speeds the villains and things of that nature and i think that is the most exciting thing about this upcoming season because we missed that for such a long time since season three like we're on season seven now it's been literal years since we last had a big bad speeds development obviously you've had like reverse flash showing up a couple of times for extended runs but never as like a full-on main villain so i think this is really interesting and he confirms that yeah the season six mystery of godspeed is going to be wrapped up and you're going to get answers so that's all really really exciting let's move on to the last question so this is do you have a rough date for when you'll get back into filming and start season seven obviously everything's up in the air at the moment eric says it's funny i'm literally on the phone every day perhaps two or three times a day either calling on a conference call zoom call or emails about going back into production how can we do it safely because safety has to be our first concern and it's my first concern the hope is to start in october or november to start in the fall that is definitely the hope however we will probably see in the next couple of weeks i'm actually very cautious but cautiously optimistic and of course when we start we'll determine how many episodes we can crank out so let's all keep our fingers crossed for the fall obviously we won't premiere until sometime in 2021 we don't know when we're going to premiere yet well they've said that the flash is set to premiere in january 2021 that is the 
predicted release date and we know right now the Flash's cast are back in Vancouver, they are isolating and they will be returning to filming at the start of October. This interview was done a while ago, like a couple of months ago, because, you know, I know the person who interviewed Eric in this interview and I know it was a while ago. So, yeah, they've figured it out and they're going to be back and they're going to be filming and they're going to be filming in October, not November. Obviously, there's a chance things could go wrong and they have to stop production and then start again or something like that. But for now, they are returning and episodes should be coming out and premiering in January 2021. And right now, obviously, the episode count is up in the air, but they are committed to 17 episodes, we've been told, via some sources in Vancouver. However, that could be extended or it could be cut down due to what is happening and, you know, how everything's up in the air. So we'll have to wait and see. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and share this video around. Also, check out my recent videos because I think there's some interesting stuff that you guys may have missed, maybe on the news or something like that. But there is a lot of interesting stories and theories that I go over and I think you guys will like. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.